About six months ago, these logs fell off of the tree in my front yard. This happened yesterday. Option number one is I call the city. Option number two is I attempt to make my first greenwood chair. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I do have a degree in woodworking and furniture design. Before I could start stripping all the bark, I took my handsaw and started cutting off any of the protruding knots that were left on the log. About five or six knots in, I realized that this was a complete waste of time and dragged my pieces over to my bandsaw. This can be a totally dangerous thing. If you are not comfortable using a bandsaw, I would not recommend this. Just go ahead and stick with your handsaw. It can be very risky. If you hit the knot wrong, your blade can pull and drag the piece into it or snap the blade and you could end up with some major safety issues. So please do not attempt to take raw logs and put them on your bandsaw unless you are absolutely comfortable doing this maneuver. And we're off. I've built this shave horse in a previous video, so I will link that in the description box if you want to check that out. But this is a traditional shave horse that is used to strip logs. Now I'm using a draw knife or draw shave, whichever you'd like to call it, and it is used to strip the bark. I did try to use my woodworking spoke shaves, those did not work out all that great because this bark is so rough. For my safety gear here, I am wearing a pair of chainsaw chaps. Since I am drawing the knife towards me, I wanted to make sure that I was fully protected. I also am wearing a waxed apron. It is probably overkill, but I love to accessorize, so what can I say? My logs are shaved, and I am about to collect all of my shavings to throw into my compost. A couple of people have been teasing me about how I love to clean in my videos. Doesn't matter what kind of floor you're working on, sawdust can get really slippery. And that's the number one reason why I make sure I sweep regularly. The last thing you wanna do is be walking around with some kind of power tool going and slip on some sawdust. It could be, <laughs> it would be total disaster. So make sure you keep a clean shop as you're working. So I started mapping out my layout now that my parts are debarked. And I don't really have much of a plan because when you're dealing with these, you know, organic shapes and I um, have to work with what nature has given me. So for the back pieces, I want to place these three pieces here along the back end to act as a back support. For those joints, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll drill a hole through the main back pieces and then slip these in like as if I was doweling. I had to be careful not to plow major holes through my pieces because structurally it'd be a no-go. Using my favorite pocket knife, I thinned down the end of the three main pieces I was gonna be sinking. To help match my drill bits, I drilled some holes in a piece of scrap wood that I could use for fitting. Could have measured where the placement was going to go, but I didn't. It was much easier just to eyeball, and since this was an organic form, it really didn't matter much as long as it looked good. With the back dry fitted, I used some quick clamps to help me lay out the form. I rigged up what the chair is going to be and I've decided that what I'm going to do is I will drill a hole through both of the members, sink a dowel in between the two pieces and glue it in. I hopped on the lathe to make some dowels using some of the leftover logs. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue up the ladder pieces. But since this is an odd shape, I'm gonna have to use my strap clamps in order to pull the whole thing together. Just using my trusty Type Bond 2. These are woodworking strap clamps, and I got these at Harbor Freight, but you can order them from woodworking stores. But it came with these four little corner squares, so if you're doing like a frame. Follow these up with the brush. This has me looking at end grain on the top and the bottom. So the only thing that's really doing any holding are the two side cheeks because that's where my face grain is, or my side grain in this case. So I want to make sure I get enough glue coverage on the two side cheeks. I put that in wrong? Maybe I did put it in wrong. Not enough coffee in the morning. I'm going to try and work quickly here because I can't get that strap clamp on until I get all of them into where they're going. I do not want this glue to harden on my piece because when I go to apply my finish, the glue will act as a resist. Especially since I am not intending on sanding this piece, I want to leave the markings from the shaving on it. Before I move 
any further, I am going to temporarily assemble the chair with some screws. Once I go and do the permanent assembly, and I don't have to worry about seeing any of those screws because the dowels are gonna be much larger than the screw heads. Now, why am I doing this? For two reasons. I decided to go with a weave as far as the seat goes. To do that, I am going to have to make a template of what the seat pattern is because it's such an odd shape. I realize it's going to be much easier if I do all of my sewing first, rather than me having to hand stitch over each one of these once this is assembled, I am going to stitch the weave, apply it on here like a curtain rod, and then assemble the chair. Because of that, I am also going to have to spray finish this chair before its main assembly. Because once I apply the weaving, I'm not gonna be able to put a finish on it. Well, I sorted out all of my fabric, and I think I'm ready to go for this glue up. I've decided what I'm gonna do is glue the two side pieces first, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the main part of the seats here. I do not know if I'm gonna do this all in one go, so this is something I'm gonna to have to make up as I go. Once the babies were settled, I finished the weave and glued up the back bar. Because this was a strange curve, I did have to set in a couple small stitches just to keep my fabric pieces in place. I guess you approve. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon.